So let's go back to your philosophy. Low cost, long term investing. Yep. That's pillar one. Automation. Automation. Yeah. Do not try to save money. This is a very common. I hear people say, oh, I tried to save money. I go, did you try to brush your teeth this morning? They go, no, I, I have a habit. I go, saving money is even easier than that because you set it up once and you never think about it again. So a good guideline is you should spend less than one hour per month on your finances. That's what I do. And that means your money comes into your checking account and it's automatically dispersed to different accounts, saving, investing, spending, all of it. You should not be sitting there transferring money. That's a low value item. All right, so that's next. Um, third, really important is designing your crisp vision of a rich life. And there's a lot of exercises that we do, creating your money dials, um, creating your money rules. There's lots of ways we can do that. We could even do it right now. And then using oh, your it. money Let, to live it. Wait, let's let's pa let's pause and get some of those in, like just right. for for context. Yeah. All right. Let's do, let's do one together, Mike. And okay. then for everybody listening, play along. Okay, All right, cool. Mike. What do you love spending money on? Travel and experiences. Ooh. Okay. I love how quick that was off the bat. Okay. Beautiful. So let's call that a money dial. I call it a dial because we can turn it up or turn it down. Uh, by the way, the most common responses to that first question are eating out. That's the number one money dial. Travel is number two, so you're in good company. Number three is health and wellness. Number four is my personal money dial, convenience. And then there's a whole bunch of other ones. Okay. Question number two. If you could quadruple the amount that you spent on travel, what would it look like and feel like for you? I'm actually going to redact that because I'm traveling too much right now. So I'm going to say experiences. So in okay. my mind, I'm pulling back travel. Okay. And so I'm saying uh, experiences. And then so the question is, what does it look like and feel like? If you quadrupled the amount you spent on that, what would it look like and feel like for you? Uh, fun. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Yeah, it would feel um, there's a social aspect to it. So there's a connection with relationships. There's a buoyancy in the air. There is good laughter. There's flow. There's engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some high stimulating activities, like a little bit of uh, on the edge risk stuff, whether that's anything from like whatever, fill in the blank, physical yeah. stuff that we can do. And um, and then there's the commensurate, like putting your feet up and like really great recovery time. And can so- Can you give me a specific example? So l tell me yeah, an experience you do today and what you would do if you were to quadruple your spending. So, uh, okay, so uh, let's go snow skiing. Um, right now what I'll do is I'll, I'll hit a mountain and um, get after it with, family, friends. And then um, afterwards, it's like a nice pre ski and just kind of roll out, stretch, relax, maybe movie, dinner uh, in the cabin. Okay. So if Beautiful. I quadruple that, I'm hella skiing. Um, there's a masseuse where? at the, uh, probably British Columbia. Okay. Yep. Cool. I like where I see what you're doing. And um, I've got people that are, uh, there's probably two helicopters and there's one for people that are getting that really, uh, you know, get on their edges. And there's others that are just trying to figure it out and they're mm -hmm. let's call it intermediate. And so two helicopters, um, there's plenty of uh, masseuse afterwards, you uh -huh. know, there's, uh, it, and you know, some great food and it's catered. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard this answer. I love it. It reveals a lot about you. I just love it. Let me tell you what I heard. So first off, I heard someone who's physically active, already does skiing, has a certain skill level, beautiful. What I heard with the quadruple question was, um, of course there were some what changes in there. I would have, you mentioned you'd have catered food, masseuse, uh, multiple helicopters, like amazing, I love it. What I also heard buried in there was, I would have loved ones with me. Mm -hmm. And I assume if the you quadrupled 5X, 10X, maybe you'd even pay for them. Fantastic. No, yeah, yeah. That's all. It's like all, all, all covered, like whatever. Yeah, like the, like the whole thing's done. Okay, amazing. So you and I share this love of bringing people together for experiences. Now, for everybody listening, that was a very advanced answer from Mike. Let me decompose what I typically hear. So okay. I usually hear people say, my money dial is eating out. And I ask them, if you quadrupled your spend, what would you do? And they say the same thing usually. They go, well, I'd probably have to watch what I eat because I'd be eating out four times a week. Ha, ha, ha. It's very linear thinking. 
The idea that if you quadruple the amount of money you put towards something, you would just eat at the same places more. Okay. As if frequency is the only variable we've got. Sometimes I ask them, would you eat at this? Would you still eat at Chipotle? And they go, oh, no. I, I, and one guy in DC, he had a very memorable thing he said. He goes, I actually have a list of every Michelin starred restaurant in the city I would go to. And I said, okay, who would you take with you? And he said, my family. And I, I said, why? And he got very quiet. He said, because they can never afford to eat at places like that. So, The point is not you got to eat at a Michelin-starred restaurant or you got to go hella skiing. That's not the point. The point is you take the thing you already love spending money on and you clearly and vividly visualize what it would look like to turn it up. And it's not enough to say travel. Oh, I would travel more. What does that mean? Where would you go? What seat on the airplane would you sit on? What would you eat? What would you not do? Like if I'm going to Italy on a luxury vacation, I'm skipping a couple monuments. I'm not interested. But I'm going to have a behind-the-scenes uh, design tour. Cause I love that stuff. Now, what's the point of all this? The point of this is to understand what you love to spend money on and therefore how you can spend extravagantly on the things you love. As long as you cut costs mercilessly on the things you don't, maybe you can't afford two helicopters today, but you could certainly afford a skiing trip and you can invite a couple of friends and treat them. You can also set up a savings goal so that in this exact month and year, you've got the money to take the dream trip. And when I work with individuals and couples like this, suddenly when they visualize, they get excited. Maybe they've even got a joint vision. Then we look at their spending and I go, okay, tell me which of these things you're spending on that's not serving that beautiful vision of a hella skiing trip. It's so easy. It's like a knife cutting through butter. They just start to eliminate things. But if I came to them and the first thing I said to them was pull out your budget, which by the way, no one even keeps a budget. Let's find all the things you're doing wrong. That's not going to go anywhere. That's what personal finance has done for the last 20 years. So we got to start with what we love and dive in before we get to what we want to cut. It's cool. You know, as we're, as you're going through it, I love, I love the process that you're doing because it's, um, you're invoking imagination connected to feelings, um, which is just a little bit closer to the clarity required to think like I can, I, I might be able to make that happen. Yeah. And then, but the thing that's happening for me is that I'm going, "Mm, let's let's quadruple it one more time, eight helicopters. And I go, no, I like, I'm having a problem with like what I just said with the, uh, the environment and Mm -hmm. like my, my system or my value system around like that. And that's like, that's not great. But I love that. Yeah. And then I'm having another conflict, which is like, wait, hold on. Like the thing that the other thing that I love spending money on, because I somehow I got sucked into the conversation, like for me. And, and then I naturally went to for others, but like my wife and I want, we've got like some life goals to send some people to college. We've awesome. got, you know, some ideas that we, a uh, number of people that we want to feed. Mm. And so like, that's, that's where I want to really quadruple it. I, I can go, I would be better off. This is you and me, Remy, just speaking. I'd be better off skiing, you know, uh, in the traditional lift line stuff and then saying, oh, uh, you know what? We've, we fed a thousand people. I love that. You know, we put, we put our, our, our idea right now is one kid through college that we, we don't have a relationship with, but, um, maybe that four X's is like, yeah, four kids through college. So yeah. anyways, like I would be better if I would have gone to that answer first, but somehow I got sucked into serving <laughs> me. Well, there's nothing you know, wrong in an with extravagant that. Way. Yeah. Look, here's what I love about it. You're really, uh, searching for your intention. And a yeah. lot of times you can end up actually doing a lot more things than you think. If you start investing early, if you're highly strategic about where your money goes, you can do it. But what most of us do with our money is we simply drip it and drab it over to here and there. And then we get to the end of the month and we go, I guess I spent that much. And when we try to improve with our money, we think improving means cutting back 5% on everything. That's not inspiring. It's not effective. What I would rather have people think of is almost like dumbbells heavy weights on one side, the things you love. And well, this metaphor breaks down with dumbbells, but heavy weights on the other side of things you don't care about. So in your mind, maybe it's skiing, maybe, or maybe it's sending kids to college. Beautiful vision. I love that. I went to college on scholarship, so that's meaningful to me. Uh, But regardless, it's you and your wife setting an intention and then making your money start to live that intention.